goal of our team is to develop and use advanced optical methods for the investigation of visual circuits from the retina up to the primary visual cortex. For this type of research, it has been essential to create an interdisciplinary team where physicists, engineers and neurophysiologists could work together on common projects. Today, we are about 20 people with complementary expertise uh, comprising photonics, um, microscopy, neurophysiology, and this enables us to work at the same time on the developing of new microscopy, but also to use them for the investigation of visual circuits. To analyze the visual circuits, we need at the same time to image and manipulate the electrical signals called action potential that neurons normally use to communicate each other. This can be done today by using a specific class of photosensitive tools called genetic calcium indicators, which enables to transform an electrical signal into a fluorescent signal, and therefore detectable with an optical microscope. The detection of these signals with single cell resolution can be done by using two photomicroscopy. This is a kind of microscopy that has been first predicted in 1913 by Maria Gopemeyer, which uses infrared light focalized deep in the brain. Today, the combination of two photomicroscopy with fluorescent calcium indicators enable to image the propagation of signal within neuronal circuits at single cell resolution and with single spike precision. For example, is it possible to record the activity patterns evoked in the visual cortex during the projection of specific visual stimuli or in the retina during the light stimulation of photoreceptors? <music> to mimic, reproduce, modify this kind of activity, first of all, we need to make neurons sensitive to light. The recent revolution of optogenetics has solved this challenge by developing a new class of photosensitive tools called opsins, which enable to transform an optical signal into an electrical signal, and so to convert photons into an electrical current. And so with this, it's possible to control the activity of neurons by using light. As a next step, we need to develop illumination approach that enables using optogenetics to switch on and off the neurons in a neuronal circuits in the same way that is revealed by calcium imaging. So for this, we have proposed a few years ago to use holography. This is a revolutionary approach that has been proposed by Dennis Gabor in 1970, which allows to recreate with light the shape of a physical object in absence of the object. And this is also a concept that has been largely used in science fiction movie. A few years ago, we have proposed to use the evolution of holography, today called computer-generated holography, to generate holographic illumination patterns that can control the activity of one or multiple neurons in a neuronal circuit. Because the device used to project holographic patterns is a dynamic device, is it possible to generate a sequence of illumination patterns that vary with time? Combined with two photon imaging and optogenetics, holographic illumination enables to control in a very precise way the activity of neuronal circuits. We call this combination of approach a few years ago circuits optogenetics. What can we do with circuits optogenetics? We, we can, for example, investigate how the different elements in a circuit are connected among them, or we can investigate how a single element integrates multiple inputs, or we can also demonstrate the, the presence of what we call hoop cells, or cells that control the entire activity of a network. But we can also think of using the possibility of activating simultaneously multiple neurons to replay back the activity patterns that, for example, control the perception of the vision. With the long-term perspective of using this knowledge to build up optical brain-machine interfaces for visual restoration.